Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Now in this video we're starting off our section on set theory. Um, now in the previous kind of preliminary videos uh, when we talked about numbers I went over the basic ideas of set theory so that we could talk about those sets of numbers like the integers and the rational numbers and things like that. So just a little recap before I get into some of the special sets I want to talk about in this video. Remember if I have some set S I can write this set in a couple of different ways. And let's say that this set is all of the no all of the integers 6 and bigger than 6, right? Now remember I can write this I always have a bracket, right? We always indicate our sets by these closed brackets. I can write this by listing all of the elements, right? I can go 6, 7, 8. And I use this ellipsis, this dot dot dot. And what that means is I continue on infinitely in the same fashion that I've been doing so far. But we have a more elegant way of writing these sets, don't we? We can also write this as the set, right? This reads the set, and then I give a representative. So we usually, if we just have one value, we'll say we'll use x as our representative. So this is going to be the set of all x that satisfy whatever restrictions I give over here, right? And uh, the restriction in this case would be where x is an element of the integers, and x is bigger than 5. Or I could say greater than or equal to 6, right? So these are equivalent sets, and uh, I'll usually use this notation on the right unless my set is small enough uh, that it makes more sense just to write out. Now, also keep in mind that order and repetition are not um, specified when we're talking about a set, right? So in other words, the set 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, this is equal to the set 1, 2, 3. Right? But like I said, order is not specified when we talk about a set. Uh, this is also equal to a set 2, 3, 1, for example. Okay? Um, all that we mean by a set is a collection of objects, and the elements of that set are going to be the specific objects that we're talking about in that set. Okay, now another little review on notation. Remember, we have this little element sign. I've already used it once up here. But this kind of curvy E looking thing. If I have X is an element of some S, Right, that's exactly what I, this means. Sorry, this means element of. Right, this means x is an element of S, or in other words, x is in the set S. Right. Now we also had this subset notation. I have this T subset S. Now when we read this, we say T is a subset of S, but that what that means is every element in T is an element in S. Right? Or if you've watched some of the previous videos on quantifiers and things like that, I can write this, um, well, first let's do a conditional. I can write this as x in t implies that x is in s. Right now, this isn't a biconditional, right? Because I could have elements in s that are not in t. Right? T being a subset doesn't mean it has everything in s. It just means that s has everything in t. I could also write this as, you know, with quantifiers for every x in t, x is in s. Right? So we've seen these before, and. Um, there's a, another little terminology I can I can say. Um, I could also we also have a term for S in this exchange here. If T is a subset of S, we I could write that S is a superset of T. Right. That's the other side of this relationship. All of the elements in T are in S. So that means that T is a subset of S, or alternatively, it also means that S is a superset of T. What that means is that S contains all of the elements that are contained in T. Now, sometimes you'll see this little symbol here. And this is kind of like when we talk about inequalities, you know, it's kind of like less than or equal to. And that's exactly what this means. If I have T and then this, what this means is T is a subset of S or t equals s. Now this is sometimes used in books. I'm just introducing this so that you're used to it, but I'm not going to use this here. 
right? The notation that I'm going to use in my videos is this notation here, and I'm going to go ahead and let this mean that t could equal s. If I want to specify that t is not equal to s, what I will do is I'll say that t is a subset of s, meaning that it could also equal s, and I'll write that t, I can write this, right, is not subset of s, or I might write just that t does not equal s to specify that case, right? I'm not going to use this uh, general notation very much in these videos. And uh, one more statement before I clear my board and start going into some new stuff. We say s equals t if and only if, right? Remember, this is my biconditional statement, so this reads if and only if. Uh, s is a subset of t and t is a subset of s, right? So using my logic notation here, remember this is and, if you haven't watched those videos. So we say that s is equal to t if and only if s is a subset of t and t is a subset of s, right? Now this fact here may seem obvious, but if you're ever asked to prove that two sets are equal, this is how we prove it. Oftentimes we'll be able to show that s is a subset of t and we'll be able to show that t is a subset of s. And that commonly is the most direct and easiest way to show that two sets are equal to each other. All right. Now I'm going to go over some uh, new special sets now that we've kind of had that little recap about some of these notations. We have a couple of special sets that we talk about. Now the first one, we denote this. This is called the null set. Or sometimes we'll call it the empty set. Now this literally means an empty set. All right. So this is the set which contains no elements. If you think of a set as a box that's filled with all of these different things, like a box of toys, let's say, is your set. Well, all of those toys inside the box are the elements of that set. The null set in that respect would be a toy box that has nothing in it, right? It's just an empty box or an empty set. Now the empty set, notice that the empty set is a subset of S for any set S, right? So this is always true always. Okay? That's always going to be a true statement. The null set is a subset of anything. Okay? We sometimes talk about the universal set. And the universal set is, is kind of a relative idea, right? So if I'm talking about a set of integers, for example, my universal set might be all of the integers. Or if I'm talking about a specific set of just numbers, my universal set, and this will commonly be our universal set, is the set of all real numbers, right? So universal set kind of changes based on what we're talking about, but usually when we say universal set or we say u, that's going to be a complete set that includes everything in the smaller sets that we're talking about. And we'll use this in the next video. Um, it's incorporated into some of our definitions when we start talking about complement. Complement is a relative term based on what universal set we're talking about. Okay. Now the last set I'm going to talk about is the power set. Kind of this P of S. And sometimes um, sometimes you'll see like a fancy P. You know, it'll be like some kind of nice cursive P of S, uh, depending on what text you're using. And this means the power set. Now the power set is itself a set, and I'm going to go ahead and define it using set notation. The power set of the set S, right, this S here is a set itself, this is going to be the set of all sets T such that T is a subset of S, and that's proper or improper, right, so that includes the empty set and it includes its um, S itself. So here we're getting into kind of a new idea. This is a set of elements where each of those elements are themselves sets. Right now for uh, computer scientists, you could think of this as an array where the elements of that array are themselves arrays, right? This is a, a, a commonality in computer programming and it's a commonality in mathematics too. A set can be any object. So there's no reason why we can't talk about a set where all of the objects are sets, right? Um, so let's do some examples, I guess. Let's say um, my S is equal to one, two, right? My power set of that, power set of S, 
I'm just going to go ahead and list them out, right? I already gave the general notation. But this is going to be the set that just includes 1, the set that just includes 2, S itself, right? The whole set 1, 2, and the empty set. Right? So the power set of S has four elements. All four of those elements are themselves sets. We call these two that are not equal to the set or the null set, we call these non-trivial. And whenever we're talking about a subset of S, S itself and the null set are called the trivial subsets. Right? They're the ones that are always going to be there. Non-trivial means that you know it kind of depends on what S is, doesn't it? Okay. Now that's it for this video. There's some special sets. We're going to go into the next video. It's going to be about set operations, defining those set operations, what it means, and, uh, and then some combinations of those. So we'll see you there.